Joe Biden is turning America into a socialist hellhole. The mission of the Democrat Party is to promote socialism. They want to promote socialism, ultimately leading, unfortunately, to communism. Holy sh**. Bernie Sanders was in Denver the other day and said the same thing as Barack Obama, appealing to, to his crowd, his supporters, help me transform America. We will not only win this election, we will transform this country. The forces arrayed against us are growing faster than the alternative. You've got the George Soros billionaires and others who are funding these efforts. If we do not take this opportunity, freedom could be lost. What the f Okay. All jokes aside, this is all actual footage from this year's CPAC, the annual conservative political conference, and we'd be foolish to just dismiss this as Republicans being crazy and unhinged. After all, this isn't happening for no reason. Socialism is probably the most popular it's been since the 60s and 70s. A poll conducted by the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, which is of course no friend to socialism or communism, found that 49% of Gen Z supported socialism, 57% of Gen Z, and 60% of millennials favored a radical shift of our economic system away from capitalism. It's clear that the inequality and suffering created by capitalism is giving rise to a new way of organizing society. And Republicans know this. That's why they're making a concerted effort to define socialism, or misdefine really, in order to steer young people away from socialist ideas. They're trying to define socialism as a system where a bunch of elites act with complete disregard for average people. You get this bubble that goes on there where they think that only the people who are inside that bubble are the best and brightest, and only those people know how to tell other people how to live their lives. I think that's the most dangerous thing about Washington, D.C., New York, the Acela Corridor. But wait a second, that sounds a lot like what we already have. For example, when Donald Trump was president, he passed a $2 trillion tax cut where a quarter of the tax reduction went to the top 1%. Isn't cutting taxes for the rich, which allows them to not pay for things like jobs and healthcare, you know, things average people would benefit from? Isn't that the definition of elitism? Whereas a socialist would reduce or even eliminate taxes on the vast majority of people and raise taxes on the elites, the 1%. Or how about the massive bailouts for banks and corporations when the pandemic hit. The government, under the leadership of Donald Trump, spent trillions of dollars bailing out banks and billion dollar corporations, all while regular people got laid off, evicted, or went hungry. 70 million people filed for unemployment benefits. There were food lines that were miles long. But did those people get a bailout from Donald Trump? No, only the elites did. Which is why billionaires are doing better today than ever before. A socialist would have bailed out the people and let the corporations go bankrupt. But how could you be surprised at all of this? I mean, Donald Trump's cabinet was literally full of elites. The most ridiculous and overused accusation here is that the Democratic Party is actually a socialist party and that Joe Biden is a socialist. It's hard to reconcile this with all the times that leaders of the Democratic Party repeatedly insisted that they believe in capitalism. Not to mention, Joe Biden's whole electoral strategy was basically to distance himself from socialism and Bernie Sanders. He bragged all the time about how he beat the socialists. And it totally checks out. Right now, the Biden administration is resisting calls to make good on his promise to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. You'd think if he was a socialist, the first thing he would do, even before checking out that sick White House bed, would be to raise the minimum wage. But no, he won't do it. The truth is that both parties are elitist because they represent the elite. Not to mention, most of them are millionaires themselves. So I completely agree with CPAC when they say that Washington DC is elitist. I lived there for five years. The only thing they're forgetting is that half of Washington is Republicans, half Democrats, half Republicans, all elitists. And to go even further, I'm actually sympathetic to those people who oppose elitism, even if they think it's being caused by socialism. Because the elitism is real, and it's reprehensible. But it's not socialism that's causing it, and the prominence of this idea that socialism is elitism really just goes to show how deeply embedded anti-socialism is 
in American society. When I first became political, I was super anti-socialist. And I think most people that grow up in our country are that way because they only say bad things about socialism in school. But as I watched president after president, regardless of party, carry out the same elitist agenda, putting the needs of the top 1% above everyone else, I realized that aside from minor disagreements, the two parties had the same agenda, the agenda of capitalism. Unlike capitalism, socialism puts the needs of average people above the need to make profit for a handful of ultra rich people. It makes sense that now of all moments, we're seeing a resurgence of socialist politics because the United States is currently stuck in the worst recession since the Great Depression. While a handful of billionaires made trillions of dollars during a global pandemic, millions of Americans are homeless facing eviction or unemployed, and tens of millions more are one paycheck away from all of that. A socialist system could solve most of the problems of poverty and inequality that we face today, but it would require stripping the elites of their mountains of wealth, which is why every socialist movement in US history has been violently crushed. For the same reason, the millionaires and billionaires that run the Republican and Democratic parties want to crush this new resurgence of socialism. We saw just how afraid they were at CPAC this year. But history shows that repressing ideas is only a temporary solution. With technological capabilities unmatched by any moment in human history, we now have the ability to reorganize society to end poverty, war, and needless human suffering. Yet the wealthy elites refuse to allow this reorganization to happen. The question of socialism has really become an existential question for our species, and no amount of violence or scaremongering can stop an idea whose time has come. Joe Biden, he's a moderate, don't worry.